Oregon is on the cusp of clinching a spot in the Pac-12 championship game and building its case further to make the playoffs. But Oregon State trying to play. Spoiler, Angie Machado and Matt Prem are here to break down this Pac-12 rivalry game. The Ducks looking for revenge after the Beavers' comeback victory in Corvallis last year that knocked Oregon out of the Pac-12 title game. Dan Lanning said that 38-34 loss still resonates with the team, going so far as to call the rematch their Super Bowl. So one of the biggest matchups in the 127-year history of this series, hopefully not the last, as Oregon leaves for the Big Ten. But Angie, what does this game mean to the players if it is the last? Yeah, it's, it's always a big game. It's for the for the state of Oregon and Oregon State. Um, you know, it's, it's been for bragging rights, whether the Ducks have been good or bad and the Beavers have been good or bad. It's, it's always been um, kind of that last bragging rights. Families are, are divided. There's Beavers and Ducks on family sides. And this is a, a big one just for um, it could be the last. I'm, I'm hearing it may not be, but um, at least it's the last in the Pac-12 as we know it. So um, I think there's some feelings of we need to go out and get one last win, but uh, it's going to be a tough one for sure. Yeah, Oregon on the flip side, that they're very upset with how that game ended last season. I think Oregon State ran like 27 straight run plays against the Ducks in the second half. Uh, today, Brandon Dorless, Oregon star defensive lineman, said it's an embarrassing showing on tape for their defensive line coach, Tony Tuioti, for themselves. Uh, the players walked into the facility this week, and that fourth quarter is on loop. Players have joked that they've tried to change the channel, and they can't. It's on every single channel in the HDC. Um, Oregon wants to play this game moving forward. Uh, when they move to the Big Ten, Dan Lanning told me that you know it's an important game for the state. Oregon's making efforts with other games that they've got scheduled for 24 uh, to try and get Oregon State on the schedule. But uh, for now, it's the last time we may see this. Hopefully it's not the last, and it's one that means a lot for both Fan bases in the state, as Angie said, uh, there's houses divided in the state of Oregon this week. Oregon's offense scoring over 46 points a game. That's the second most in the nation with Bo Nix leading the way. He's been a Heisman favorite all year and really cool stat for him here. He's on pace to set the FBS record for completion percentage in a season. But that Beavers defense is no joke. So, Matt, how do you see the matchup going on this side of the ball? Yeah, Oregon's kind of changed their offense the last couple of weeks. Um, we're seeing a lot more uh, vertical and horizontal throws by, by Bo Nix. He's taking more shots, stretching the field. Um, and it, it's going to be a test against an Oregon State secondary. That's one of the better ones in the conference. Uh, but Oregon's receivers, now their tight ends, have started to make uh, plays. We've, we've seen multiple guys have career days through the air receiving. And that's that's going to be the big question. Um, can can Oregon State stop the speed and the, and the, the skill sets that they have at the receiver position? Headlined by Troy Franklin, who became the, the school's all-time leader in receiving yards and touchdowns in a single season this past week. Yeah, I, I think Oregon State's defense is really going to need to, to step up. It's a, it's a younger secondary unit which we really thought the, the front seven would be the, the key to this. And and I still see that because I think if Oregon State's going to have some success against Bo Nix in the passing attack, they're going to need to pressure Bo Nix as much as they can. And I, and I realize that Oregon offensive line is not giving up many sacks. I know it's going to be a tough challenge, but if they can try to pressure him a little bit, force him maybe into a bad decision or so or two, you know, this is an Oregon State defense that has more sacks than they did last season for the, all 13 games combined. They are getting some pressure, and they've also got some takeaways in there as well. So um, look for some pressure, and then look for Oregon State to be opportunistic on the on the takeaway game. Now the ground game for both teams will be strength on strength. Teams here ranking top 10 in their running game, over five yards a carry. Both defenses also ranking top 20 against the run, but Angie, Oregon State does favor running the ball a bit more. So how important is the Beavers' ground game in this matchup? It, it's huge, and, and, it's, and it's huge for a couple reasons. You know, first, that is Oregon State's strength. The, their offensive line is built to, to run block. They are a really solid run blocking team first. Damian Martinez is one of the top backs in the conference, if not the country. He's a Doak Walker semifinalist. Um, this is a team that's going to look to run the ball, but it's important, too, because you want to keep the ball out of Bo Nix's hands. 
Uh, last week against Washington, Oregon State controlled the clock to the tune of 38 minutes to 22 minutes in that two-point loss to the Huskies. So this is going to be a main point of emphasis for Oregon State, whether that is Damian Martinez, the second back, Deshaun Fenwick, or even DJ Uangalale, who uh, can move the ball with, as well with his feet. Yeah, this is this is like strength on strength, as you said. Uh, Oregon knows... No, 268 yards last season to the Beavers on the ground was unacceptable. They know that Damian Martinez is one of the best backs, not only in, in the conference, but nationally. He does not get the recognition that he deserves. Um, he's a bigger back. He's 6'2", 220 pounds. They know he's going to just really pound on this defense. And if Oregon, if Oregon wins this game, they win it because they're going to force Oregon State to throw the football and get them into situations where it's second and long, third and long, and make DJU have to throw the football consistently. And Oregon feels like they've got an advantage when they play their receivers against Oregon's cornerbacks. They've got a size advantage of that matchup. You know, they don't. The Beavers don't start any receiver over uh, six foot. Uh, Oregon's receivers or cornerbacks are all over six foot in this game. They feel like they can kind of blanket coverage uh, that offensive passing attack. Uh, but if, if Oregon can't get OSU out of uh, the run game, it could be another game where Oregon State's in it to the very end and have an opportunity to win. The odds makers have Oregon a two-possession favorite. So, Angie, what is your key to getting a win here? You know, the key is really going to, going to come down to DJ Uangalale. You know, we talk about the run game, but like as Matt said, this is going to be a game that Oregon is going to try to force Oregon State to, to go through the air. And while DJU has, has been a big improvement from Oregon State last year at quarterback, his critics will say that his completion percentage isn't that great. It's in it's about 57%, but when you factor in the drops, the, the passing targets that were actually dropped, he's at 67.6. So, um, he needs the receivers to step up, but he too has to make some good decisions. Against Washington, we saw him maybe hold on to the ball a little too long, but when he's on, like he was against Stanford, he's on, and uh, he'll be a, a, a pretty big X factor for this team. If he, Like I said, if he's able to make the passes, Matt brings up a good point with the DBs, but that's where I see Jack Velling, the tight end, being a really important uh, piece for DJU to succeed. Yeah, for Oregon, it's it's going to be the hot start. It's going to be a game plan that's very similar to what they did against Utah a couple of weeks ago. It, you know, force Oregon State to get out of their norm, their comfortability of, of running the football. Um, if if Oregon can get out to a lead, push it to two scores even, and force Oregon State to throw the football consistently, that's just going to get them away from what they're most comfortable with. And and DJ's scrambling ability has to be accounted for. Uh, but Damian Martinez, you need to get the ball out of his hands uh, and force Oregon State to try and push the football downfield. If they can do that, it's going to be uh, advantageous for this Oregon defense to make plays, possibly get some turnovers. So it's probably going to be for Oregon in best interest to get out to a hot start, build an early lead. All right, Angie and Matt, thanks so much. For more on the game, check out Duck Territory and BeaverBlitz.com. They got you covered with all of your Oregon and Oregon State football and recruiting news all year long. Oh, shit.